Hey, it's Captain Matt, Voter Secret Weapon, and it is May 17th, 2023. We're talking a new voters market update. Is the crash here? Well, a lot of people are expecting boat prices to just plummet down. There's some good news if you're a boat shopper. Stay tuned, and we'll talk through the numbers, and I'll give you my prediction of where the market is going and where it's at currently. So if you look at the numbers year over year, in 2023 um, and 2022, you can see we're down 15% in aluminum fishing boats, uh, almost 40% in bow riders and deck boats. Not a huge surprise. That market hasn't been doing great for a decade. Uh, cruisers are down. Uh, ski boats and wake boats are down. Electric boats are up, but with only 20-some uh, uh, year to date. Overall, though, the market's down 16% for 2022. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at the historical numbers. So we've got 2018 to 2019, the market was down 2.5%. 2019 to 2020, the market went up 9%. And this is total. You can look in your particular segment. It carries across 2020 to 2021. So the pandemic year, we were actually down overall. 6%. Why was that? Well, because the supply chain issues, we had a ton of demand, but we just couldn't meet the supply. When you go from 2021 to 2022, you're down 14% there again. And now we're down just a little bit. So we had a significant jump from 19, uh, a 10% jump from 2019 to 2022. So we never saw that enormous increase of, of boats hitting the market. Uh, but we did go up from 2018. We were at 20, 285,000, uh, 2020, 298,000, 2021, 288,000, 2022, 258,000. So a, a small decline from 2018 to 2022, but not a huge shift. I mean, it wasn't like the market was up by 25% or down by 25%. Um, it, it's actually been reasonably stable. And if you look, I think this is a, a good graph. You can look at your segment. Uh, green is jet boats, blue wake boats, yellow bow riders, deck boats, gray center consoles, aluminum fish, and pontoons. You can kind of see how your segment did. But overall, this is the $250,000 mark. So we've been with 250,000 unit mark. You know, we barely hit 300,000 in 2020 and 2022. 2021. And if you look at 2022, we're just a little bit off of 2019. And it seems like we're kind of on that pace. So what are the dealers saying? Well, this is from the soundings tray only Baird uh, research. The flip from high demand, low inventory to low demand, high inventory happened faster than I even thought it would. So this dealer, he thought it was going to happen quick, but it was almost like a switch. Boom. One day we didn't have enough boats. The next week we had too many boats. Manufacturers been pushing product early on, claimed inventory would be tight again this year. Then they kept coming back saying, we have a few more units we can have. Now, after slow sales and taking inventory, we're sitting heavier than we would like. So what did I say? The very first market update I did two years ago, I said, we're going to be fine unless the manufacturers start overbuilding and start pushing that inventory on the dealers. Well, it appears that for this particular dealer, that's what happened. When you look at the, hey, where's new boat inventory? We still have, you can see this is January, February, March 2023 numbers. That's the most recent I have. So we're about 60% said, I've got too much inventory. And about 15%, maybe 10% said, uh, you know what, I, I'm still short. I still would like some more boats. And the other 20% or so is, is saying, we're about right. So you can see how that graph has gone way. We need boats, we need boats, we need boats. Uh-oh, boats are starting to come, boats are starting to come. Now we're seeing dealers think, oh, we're a little bit higher than what we need to be. On the used boat side, everybody said, used boat market, they're going to crash, there's going to be steals out there. I said, I don't think so. I don't think that's what's going to happen because I kind of saw how the market was going. And if you look, this is dealers again saying, well, pandemic, we don't have nearly enough, nearly 100% of them in the 2021-22 market saying, we need more used boats. Now, about 20%, a little over 20% say, we've got too many used boats. But still 40 plus, let's say 45, maybe 50% say we need more used boats. So that part of the market, and again, this is March 2023, that part of the market is saying we could use some more used inventory. Now, what they're really saying, I think, is we could use some more $20,000, $30,000 boats because the new boat prices have gone up so much. There's a segment of the market we just haven't been able to fulfill. We haven't been super worried about it during the pandemic because we had more than enough business coming in and we needed boats for them. But now we need to make some sales and we're we're looking at that twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 used boat customer again. We need more of those used boats. I think that's what's happening. 
when you look at the dealer outlook, again, dealers are from 2014 to 2019. Hey, outlook looks pretty good. We're getting better, better, better. 2019, we started dipping down way down for the pandemic and then it shot way up and now we're on that downward trend so we're back to where we were back in 2019 um but then it kind of buoyed up for the boat show season I thought hey maybe things are things are improving and we're not going to have that downward slide we thought and then it's kind of dropping back down again you can see that number is about 30 50 is we're neutral we feel good about the market but we don't think it's great we don't think it's terrible uh but it's dipped down that's about 30 or so on both the current outlook and the five year outlook so i think that's interesting that that it jumped back up because boat show season was going pretty good they finally had inventory at the boat shows i heard a lot of dealers say we had a better boat show than we've had for years uh, partly because they had product on the floor to sell uh, but then that sort of dipped back down as we hit uh hit uh this is march again i think is when those numbers go through what are dealers saying two big surprises for us at the new york boat show there were still a significant amount of first time boat buyers there that's from jeff strong and strong's marine uh, up in new york um, you know, we had people that were openly said they were sitting on the sidelines for two years when the market was crazy. Now the discounts at the dealer level has normalized. So dealers are there to earn the client's business. Negotiations are working. Um, it felt more normal negotiating environment for the client. So they were jumping back in. It wasn't, this is the boat, take it or leave it. It's, Hey, this is the boat. How can we get, how can we work the numbers to get you in there? And I think that's where we're at. We'll talk about that more. Two consistent complaints, inflation and high interest rates. Rates are taking out that entry-level buyer. If you've been on our Sunday Night Lives at 8.30, we've talked about that, that interest rates now. Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. But interest rates are up, which is pushing that entry-level boat from $350 a month to now $450 a month. And that's taking some people out. Most buyers are almost exclusively cash. Um, so we've got money. We're pulling it out of the market pulling it out of savings and just writing a check or pulling it out of our home and writing a check. And this dealer says, hey, pricing for OEMs and for the dealers, it's unsustainable. People, we aren't going to be able to maintain the business if prices for boats continue to go up. Uh, feel very stagnant market looking out for 24 months. So he's one that when we looked at this market, that makes sense. The outlook is going down. Okay. So let's look at the consumer price index for um, just everything that us consumers buy. This is March, 2022 to March, 2023. And you can see the price index has gone down for all items. Items, less food and energy have stayed consistent. That tells me that this is mainly because gas prices and energy prices have gone down. We know, um, food prices have gone up, but if you look at the line, we're about 6% kind of going from six and a half to five and a half. And we're actually on the lower half in this year. So it's the, gas prices i think those coming down a little bit energy prices coming down that um are making that adjustment so a little bit more money in the pocket but not significantly inflation rates still way up there although again there's that trend line down that we see here uh but overall inflation is still over four and a half percent uh kind of two percent is the target that the economists and people way smarter than me are hitting so we're still higher than we want to be but at least we're not trending up we're trending down which i guess is a good thing and you can see that trend line 2020 we're here at two and a half percent jump up with the pandemic and the all of the money that was flooding the market uh supply chain issues sh demand short or demand increasing supply shortage and we're coming slowly back down but we're not to that two percent where they want to be yet uh gas prices we talked about those have gone up you can see they started to come down again and there's a little bit of a delay of those gas prices hitting consumer pricing um that uh it, it costs more money to make things transport things get it to the supermarket or to the end user store and there's a, a little delay in that process so that drop in prices because of the consumer price index is probably in my guess because of this right here and uh, a little bit because of this in the short term so fuel prices about where we were last year maybe maybe 10 percent or 10 cents higher or so at 350 a gallon right now that's as of may 9th when i pulled those numbers again the ppi for uh, and this is seasonally adjusted. You can see that that uh, producer price index. So this is the manufacturers. The CPI is consumer price index. What are we paying at the grocery store, at Target, at Walmart? Um, and this is what's the manufacturer's situation. And you can see we were way up here in January 
And now we're trickling down, trickling down, and now we're below that. Um, so we've hit a negative um, in uh, in the total. Again, you can see less food and energy. That one is still staying up there just a little bit. Again, because of those energy prices is is holding that up. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Things are going in the right direction for us. Interest rates, again, I, I can't track, well, I could probably, but I don't <laughs> track boat loan rates. I should do that. But you can see interest rates have stayed up from January 2022 when they were at a low of in the 3 4% range. Um, they've gone up. I got as high as over 7% on the 30-year, and now we're down 65 5 5.5% on the 15-year. This is a, a Freddie Mac rate. And um, so they're tricked down a little bit, but we're still boat loan prices, boat interest rates are higher than they were. They're not directly correlated, but it's a, a pretty good indicator, uh, although not uh, not exact. But those rates are higher, making boats, that if you're going to finance, more expensive. Who's going to finance the boats? Typically, the entry level, the lower price buyers, where they're they're going to put it on a payment, and, um, and that payment has gotten more expensive for the same boat. That's why we're seeing the market slow down more in the cheaper boats, the more value boats, the more entry level boats, the smaller boats than the, we'll say $100,000 plus boats, the big twin trip quad engine uh, center consoles, the big $100,000 plus uh, pontoons, the wake boats, although those are slowing down. If you are looking at a boat, make sure you grab the toolkit, the Boat Buyers Toolkit. It's totally free, updated for 2023. You can get it at boatbuyerstoolkit.com. This is the number that I really am interested. Every time I do these updates to see where they're going, this is directly from Google search. So this is how many people are actually searching boats for sale uh, during a time period. This is the trend over five years. It's a trend number, not a absolute number. So not the number of people that are searching. Google holds that tight to the vest, but this is a trend of what it is. So we went from 2022, um, May, 2022, to May 2023, we went from 33 to 26. And if you look at May 2018, uh, that's 2019, we were at 38. So we've gone from 38, slowly trending down um, with our peak in 2020. The pandemic, that line's real sharp, but the line from 2019 pre-pandemic levels to 2022 is a gradual decline, but definitely a decline, okay? Same thing if you look boats for sale. If you look the shorter term, again, trend line, not absolute, 68 to 50. Again, this is May. I, I took the, the week of May 15th um, that we're in right now and uh, grabbed that same week here. So it was down. Seasonality, that's that jump right there. So I'd anticipate a little bit of a jump here. Uh, but 68 to 50, again, a short downward trend. Boats for sale. New boats, 51 to 46. Again, downward, but not as significant. Used boats downward, uh, 38 to 26. And then if you look, pontoons, 32 to 21. Uh, center consoles, 54 to 34. That was a lot bigger drop than I expected. Center consoles, in my mind, were hanging pretty good, uh, but it may just be that it's the bigger horsepower, the more expensive center consoles that people are paying cash for and have on order and are waiting. Those are still being delivered, uh, but the number of new people searching is going down. The wake boat, this was real surprising to me, 23 to 5. Those wake surf boats have gotten to be you know, 150 to get in the market, you know, maybe the heydays um, that you can get in just over 100,000, but 200,000 is nothing. And it appears that maybe, just maybe, that market's getting a little bit uh, too expensive for the number of, you know, six, seven, ten thousand $10,000 boats that they want to build a year. I thought that was an interesting trend there. You can see much, uh, much bigger drop. The used boats. So I've been doing this for about a year now. May 9th, 2023 is when I pulled these numbers, 10,000 to 75,000 used um, well, within 200 miles of uh, my zip code gas. So just power boats, 1,566 boats for sale. Okay. So how does that compare to the past? Well, February, same search, 10,000 to 75 used within the zip code gas power boats, 1,000. 116. So we've added, what is that? 400 boats in my market area that are for sale. A few more used boats on the market. What is that? Probably about 20, 30% maybe uh, increase. Um, so that's maybe 35% increase. So that is interesting. We're getting more into the selling season. So that would make sense for some of it, but um, it's still up. April, we were at uh, 11, well, 1,014, same search. October, we were at 1,400. 
Um, same search. So, okay, we're at the end of the season. People are trying to sell their boats at the beginning of the season. People are maybe trying to get their trades in. Uh, are there new boats coming in? Are they decided, hey, we're just getting out as the as the invoice comes due for their marina? January, we're at 1,400. So if you look from January to May, we've only added 100 boats or so. So there's more for sure, but it's not a significant number in that mark. Again, if you're looking at buying a boat, check out that first time Boat Buyers Academy. Uh, we've got the magic money-saving method to negotiate the best possible price on your boat. Um, but we also have um, price drops. So I think this is interesting. They've got this little button here that says price drop. You click that, and these are all boats that they were at this price, and then they dropped it. That tells me it's been on the market for a while. They were being too aggressive. We've got 296 of those price drop boats. Again, in that search, 10,000 to 75,000 used within my zip code uh, and gas power boats, okay? Now, October, we had 300 of those. So we've actually stayed about the same. Uh, January, we had 175 of those price drop boats. And May of last year, we had 845. Oh, no, this isn't the price drop. That was that was just May. So um, 845 boats in May of 2022. So last year, this time, we had only 845 boats. Now we got 1,400. I mixed those slides up. Forgot to move that one around. So we're seeing more boats on the marketplace. Um, but we knew last year, you just, you couldn't find a used boat. If you did find one, you had better act quickly because it was gone. This year, we've got, what is that, 600 more boats on the market from May, May 9th, 2023, 1566 to um, May 11th, 2022, 845. So we definitely have more on the market, more availability, okay? Now, if we look at the black book, this is for vehicles. We really, in the boating industry, we're a fraction of the auto industry, a fraction of the RV industry. But let's look at what the prices are doing on the wholesale market for cars. You can see two to eight years old trucks, cars, and uh, all of them. If you look, they've gone up from, this is November, October, November, 2022. And those prices have gone up, 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 which means they just weren't selling. You can see some seasonality in the auto industry, that sort of up and down hump that you're always seeing, uh, which looks like we could be in, in a little bit of that. But here we've had a slight adjustment to the market. And now we're on the upward trend and we're kind of seeing that downward dip in April and May. So if you look at the previous April, May, previous April, May, now that was the pandemic, so we can't really use that um, April, May here. That's kind of been a traditional downward trend. Um, but they're higher than what they have been, uh, lower than they were last year on the car prices. What does that mean for boats? I don't know. I just, I like to look at that. You would say maybe we'll see boat prices go up a little bit. Um, but I don't know for sure. I, I got the sense that we're in a better position to negotiate. So even though prices have gone up, used prices went way up. And I think we're seeing normal levels of depreciation. And again, you can kind of see that wholesale number. Where have they gone? Well, they got up as high as 24,800, 24, dropped down to 21,900. They got up as high as 31,375, dropping down to 28,375 in just the last couple of months. Again, days to turn. This is definitely going to impact the boating industry. It's longer and longer to turn the inventory. The auto side, they turn many, many more, more times in the boat industry. If you turn your inventory twice, two and a half times in the boating industry, you're killing it. Um, so that uh, if they're keeping boats longer and their turn times are slowing, well, that tells me they're going to have leftover inventories of 2022, 2023 models. As we go in past Labor Day, that's a prime time to negotiate and get discounts. All right, so let's look at um, the stock market. These people that are paying cash, well, their portfolios went from 2003, from, what is that, 1,000 maybe, up to 3,500. This is the S&P index, I believe, um, all the way up to 3,500. So we had a ton of cash made in over a 10-year span, dropped back down to just over 2,000. Now we're climbing back up to over 2,500. So this time, people are like, maybe I'll finance or maybe not buy. But as the market's going up, hey, we've got some profits to take out and we can maybe pull out of our portfolio to pay cash. So those people will stay in as long as the stock market's doing well. Okay. Many manufacturers have announced price increases through Q4 2023. That's true. The price increases to the dealer. Hey, dealers, these prices are going up. 
But what happens is they still have the, the rebate money to use to incentivize sales. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Most manufacturers are on normal six to 10 week delivery schedule. Again, high horsepower um, center consoles, more specialty boats. Um, some of the bigger pontoons, the more expensive pontoons are a little bit longer. But for the most part, you can probably find the boat you're looking for in inventory, or you can order it and still get it within you know a month to two to maybe three months at the most. You are seeing in the in South Florida hurricane boat sales. Those insurance checks have started to hit the market in the last couple of months. So in South Florida, you've got people that are replacing their hurricane damaged boats, and um, because of that, because those insurance companies are writing a bunch of checks, if you are in the Gulf, South Florida, even the Mid Atlantic, anywhere on the coast where hurricanes are prevalent the insurance has gotten significantly more expensive. So just be aware of that. If you haven't priced out insurance lately, check it out. If you have gotten an increase in insurance, it might be time to check to see, hey, can somebody else get me a more competitive rate um, and save some money? You can go to BoaterSecretWeapon.com slash insurance, and uh, we'd be happy to, to match you up with the lender and give you a quote to see if you can save a little bit of money and get great coverage. But those insurance checks hitting the market are going to impact the region uh, of South Florida that uh, was most recently hit. Again, the S&P 500, we looked, at the, we looked at the other graph, but we were up at a high in 2022. We've dipped down a little bit, but it's starting to come back. This is the five-year trend from just under 3,000 to just over 4,000, um, and that's why we're seeing people pay cash uh, for the boats is because their portfolios are looking good. In the short term, at, over the last year, kind of flat, 4,200 uh, to start the year uh, or to May of 2022, to just over, uh, just under 4,200 here. So it's gone up a little bit, 4,000 to 4,200. Um, and if you look at the last month, you know, it's it's been up and down, but it's it's basically level uh, there as well. That's as of May 9th. Um, that's always important. Now, this is the math I talked about. And um, if you look at the way the discounts are going to come, we said manufacturers are increasing their pricing, right, to the dealers. The dealers are paying more for the boat. So let's look at 2022 versus this year. The the same boat, let's say manufacturer cost is $85,000. Their, their cost went way up in 2021, 2022. It's dropped back down. Remember that producer price index was down. So they're probably building the boat for about the same cost, but they're charging the manufacturer or the, the dealer a little bit more. So the same boat, they might be charging $10,000 more. MSRP, because the manufacturer is being charged more, has going up. That's where the price increase is. The dealers last year weren't having to discount hardly anything. This year, as the guy said in the boat show, is negotiations are back to a more normal level. Dealer discounts are back to a more normal level. So they're giving bigger discounts, which is giving you about the same sales price as a consumer. Profits doesn't really matter to you if you're paying the same price, but the profits are just being split up different. Dealers were making more in 2022. Manufacturers were making less. Now that they've raised prices up, Dealers are making less, manufacturers are making more. But total profit in the deal is about the same. Price to consumer is about the same from last year to this year. That's kind of what I'm expecting. This is a totally made up example, but based on the trends in the market. But here's what's interesting. What happens when what happens when inventory's not moving and the dealers and the manufacturers say, we've got to get more aggressive. We've got to move this inventory. We have too much, which is what the numbers were telling us, right? 60% were saying, I feel like we've got too much new inventory. Well, what do you do when you have too much inventory? Instead of discounting 17,000 as a dealer, I'm going to discount 25,000 and put another bit, a little bit more discount in there. The manufacturers look at the overall dealer level inventory and say, we have too many boats out in the market. So what we're going to do is we're going to incentivize people to buy our brands and we're going to put rebates on that. We, we still have the MSRP to show the price high of boats sell, but if boats don't sell, we're going to put the rebate and you're starting to see that. Now we'll show some examples. So let's look at January, February, 2023 to where we're at May, June, July. You're starting to see some manufacturers throw rebates in saying zero before. Now we're going to give a $10,000 rebate and dealers saying, oh crap, we got too much money. Uh, we got too much money tied up in inventory, too many boats on our lot. So instead of discounting $17,000, we are going to discount a little bit more. Now, when you do the math there, oh, my sales price is wrong again. When you do the math there, you've actually got another $3,000, another $13,000 of discounts. Um, so this number is actually going to be $117,000, um, which then kind of flows through. All of the profit goes down as a consumer 
you're getting a cheaper price than you did earlier in the season because of these discounts. So is now a good time to buy? Yeah, it is because supply is starting to outweigh demand and it's slight and it's market segment and by market segment. So it's even if you look at the manufacturers, when you look at their rebates, they'll say rebates applicable for these boats and they'll say we're taking this boat out or this model out or this size out. Um, and they'll say it's only for 2022s, it's not for 23s, or only for in-stock inventory boats, it's not for ordered boats. And that's how they're keeping people to buy the boats that are on the lot so that they can get rid of those so the dealers are comfortable to order 2024 boats uh, come in the next few months. By July, August, they're starting to make those commitments and make those decisions. MSRP continues to increase. Um, I think we'll probably see an increase in 2024 models. Um, and the 2023 models, or that should say 2024 models, will start showing up in August of 2023, right? Um, no fire sale discounts expected, but more discounts by segment. So, you know, their boats aren't going to be 20% less than they were last year, but I think we are going to see boat prices drop down a little bit on the new side, which will then trickle down to the, to the used side as well. Although there's less used inventory than there is new inventory. So that may, may hold that uh, price up a little bit. Um, the, used boat prices are going to turn to a more normal level of depreciation. So instead of boats appreciating, um, they're going to go back down to a normal, you know, brand new boats are going to drop 10, 15, 20% in the first couple of years. And then it's going to plateau to five, 10%. And then once you hit that 10 year, 15 year mark, you know, they're going to depreciate just a little bit more based on the condition than anything. Interest rates are stabilizing uh, to six and a half to nine percent, depending on your credit. I don't see them go down significantly. I don't see them going up. I think they're they're probably going to be there for the year or so. Um, future pricing: if we see inflation come back up, well, that's going to impact 2024 boat prices because the the producer price index will start to go back up. Um, you'll start to see buyers walking away from their ordered boats if we see other drops in the market so if the stock market doesn't stay level it starts to dip down some of those ordered boats that are are kind of slowly working their way through the pipeline they might walk away increasing the inventory that's happening a little bit but i don't think that's a significant issue in most segments um and then this is the big one for me overproduction of new boats as demand slows that's going to equal more rebates and more dealer discounts like we looked at in the math and from the dealer's comment is hey we're getting, we're getting inventory pushed on us by the manufacturers uh, when they said we're probably going to be tight and not be able to deliver enough earlier in the season. And now they're saying, take more, take more, take more. Well, it happens every year. I talked about this two years ago um, that if the manufacturers continue to do that, they're going to overproduce in 2024. We're going to see a lot more discounts um, and uh, more dealers saying we've got way too much inventory. Hopefully they adjust their production a little bit and try to match it. On the other side, as a consumer, if they do overproduce, well, you got more negotiating power, which is always good. Um, we're kind of out of boat show season, but when you go to the dealer, you're going to see inventory. You're probably going to see the boat that you want to buy, and that's a good thing. If you see the boat that you want to buy in stock, that's the boat that they're most willing to negotiate on. If you want to order something that's a little bit different, don't expect them to be real excited to negotiate that boat. They're going to push you to order or to buy the inventory boat that they have. If they've got a 2022 model, they're going to push that one and be more aggressive on that pricing. It makes sense, right? They don't want to order a boat if they've already have a similar boat there. They're going to try to make that one appealing for you. Make a smart decision for what's right for you, what you're going to be happy with, and, uh, and use that to your advantage to negotiate. We talked about you'll start to see manufacturer rebates when the market has too many boats sitting on the lot. Well, we're, we didn't see a lot of advertised rebates during boat shows, right? The, the rebates that they did have, you had to go to the show, walk in the booth, and then you might see a sign or have a salesperson tell you. When you went to their websites, they weren't doing that. But now we're right before Memorial Day and you're seeing them advertise on Facebook, on their website, in email blasts, rebates on these models. That tells me they're a little nervous about the level of inventory that we're at in at right now in on May 17th, 2023, they're a little nervous about the level of inventory in certain segments. And if you look, if you look at the rebates, it'll tell you that select stock C-Ray SPX models qualify. So the SPXs, the entry level have a rebate, the SLX and the SDX do not. Uh, the Skeeters, the Taiga is the one that I got um, this email, $10,000 off in stock 2023 Taiga models, that little asterisk. 
That's going to be just the models that they say. Same thing with Bayliner. Same thing with, uh, let's see, this was Lund, and this was, um, ben I think, Bennington, maybe. Uh, and this one was, um, I don't remember who this one was, but look at those rebates. The bigger the rebates, the, the more inventory they have in the national dealer network, um, and the more you're in the driver's seat when it comes to negotiation, okay? So advice for new buyers. First of all, get the Boat Buyers Toolkit. It's totally free. Um, figure out what 80% of your boating looks like. Um, and then, you know, what's the other 20% that we're going to do? And buy the boat for the 80%. Try to accommodate the 20%. Visit marinas, boat ramps, dealers in your area to get the local flavor of who's good, who's bad, what type of boats work, what advice do you have. Know what you want. Inspect slowly and completely. Hey, listen, there's still some manufacturers that are have a lot of new labor in their uh in their force who maybe aren't as skilled at the craftsmanship that the guy that's been there for 30 years or the lady that's been sewing the upholstery or doing the, the layup uh on the lamination schedule pay attention to the quality and inspect even new boats completely used boats you always got to inspect those even if it's just um two weeks old who knows what's happened don't skip the sea trial the demo you're taking a huge risk if you buy a boat without running it on the water if ordering a boat, they don't have one in stock, try to find one on boat sitter, get by boat, or maybe a client's boat. That's becoming less and less of an issue. Uh, inspect completely before taking delivery and writing the check. Don't get so excited on delivery day. Matter of fact, we've got our smooth delivery day checklist that you can request for free, and it gives you a list of things to check to make sure that the delivery goes well. New boat, used boat, dealer, private seller, that will cover everything, uh, but uh, shoot us a note if you want that. And then use the magic money-saving method that we teach in the First Time Boat Buyer Academy um, because there is opportunity to save. Now, if you don't negotiate the proper way, you can leave a lot of money on the table because the dealers are still trying to make as much as they can, um, but they're also a little bit nervous. So if you play it right, you can negotiate even more, um, take advantage of the manufacturer rebates if they're out there during that time. And that's money that's coming directly from the manufacturer. And if the manufacturer pulls it, that money's gone. Don't expect the dealer to match it. Uh, but what's interesting is that that rebate money is attached to the purchase of the next similar boat. Um, so it's there. It's the manufacturer's way to ensure that the dealers buy more boats for the 2024 model year so they can continue building them. If you're buying used, again, get the toolkit, the 80%, talk to people, inspect slowly. Remember, the boat's not yours until you put up real money. Just because you've agreed to something on a phone call or Facebook or email, if they sell that boat, if you don't have money locked in, something signed, that boat's not yours. So don't dilly-dally too much. Figure that all out. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Remember, the dealers are saying, we would like more used boats. Well, that equates to the consumers. There's not that same level of supply-demand mismatch like there is on the on the new side. So there's the opportunity to negotiate a little bit more on the, on the new side. On the used, you still negotiate. But you're going to have to negotiate even higher, high, harder and be more skilled. Um, again, that magic money saving method will help. But don't overpay on that use side. Make sure you see trial and demo. And don't just go out for a five-minute cruise. Do 20, 30 minutes. Follow the checklist in the toolkit. Um, inspect completely before taking delivery and, and writing that check. Make sure everything that you expect to be there is there. The canvas covers, um, the, uh, the tie-down straps, any gear that might be included with the boat, the electronics, the covers, all that stuff. Make sure it's there because once that seller leaves, it's going to be much, much harder to get that back. And again, that smooth delivery checklist, you can get that for free when you're ready to buy. It kind of covers the weeks leading up to the day you take delivery and the day of delivery. It's a, a really great tool for you. Again, negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. You are now, it is a buyer's market. Buyer's market means if you skillfully negotiate, which we teach in the first time Boat Buyer Academy, you will save money. Um, if you use this strategy, you will save a lot of money. Uh, people have saved thousands and thousands of dollars, and uh, it'll easily pay for itself. Plus, you get all the other great information that's in the first time Boat Buyer Academy. Um, they're going to have stock. If you see 2022 models on the dealer's showroom floor, um, guess what? you are really in the driver's seat. Larger horsepower, higher end boats still may be on somewhat of a late wait list. Um, buy from your local dealer. I can't stress that enough. Buy from the best local dealer with a brand that you like. Um, look for discounts, look for rebates, negotiate. If you're buying used, remember there's still some turds on the market. Those Hurricane Ian boats, we said the checks have hit for the people that lost their boat to buy their next one. But those old boats are kind of, sometimes they filter their way in. So uh, check out uh, Boat History Report. Uh, you can get to see a link down below to use them. Uh, it's a great investment. 
there's still some people that think it's 2020 um, and they're putting their, oh, I bought this boat for 50,000. I'm gonna sell it for 55. Boats appreciate, right? That's what happens. No, normal depreciation, but there's still people that don't get it. So pay attention to the pricing, do some research. Um, you may wanna travel. Sometimes going out of your marketplace, you can expand the number of boats that are possible. Um, just figure in your transportation costs. You got to drive there. You got to pull the boat back. Um, be patient. Be ready, willing, and able to act quickly if it's right. That goes with any market. On a used, it's, hey, they've only got one of those used boats to sell. When it's gone, it's gone and you missed out. But inspect it slowly. Pay attention to how long boats are on the market. Use that price drop tool if you use Boat Trader or whatever uh, search platform you use. Um, I suggest if you're looking to go used, start looking at the market right away and just every week go check out what's there, what's not. Maybe even do a spreadsheet. Keep track of where prices are, how long boats are on the market. Because if it's on the market for a long time, guess what? You got a better opportunity to negotiate. You know that they're getting anxious about selling that boat. And again, negotiate. There's going to be price concessions. And um, and people still, they their brain says, my boat's worth more than what it probably is. So you're, you're going to have to negotiate the proper way. Again, grab that toolkit. It's totally free. If you found this video valuable, give it a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Remember, life truly is better on a boat.